from the WYLN studios in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. WYLN Evening Edition at 5.30 starts right now. Good evening. It's Wednesday, December 23rd, 2015. I'm Ann Gownley. A police officer in Schuylkill County is facing charges for making false statements during an incident in September. West Penn Township Officer Melissa Rutch told investigators that she was thrown down an embankment during a traffic stop on September 2nd. She claimed that a Hispanic male driving a Nissan Maxima threw her over a guardrail after she tried to taser him. She was taken to Lehigh Valley Hospital while authorities launched a manhunt for the suspect accused of attempted homicide. After an investigation, authorities learned that Rutch called in a fake traffic stop. She is now charged with four misdemeanor counts of making false reports. The charges will be mailed to her rather than her appearing before a district judge. A preliminary hearing has not been scheduled at this time. Rutch has been suspended without pay. State police are on the lookout for a female who attempted to rob the Gulf Station on State Route 93 in Sugarloaf Township. The incident took place Tuesday night just after 9.30 p.m. According to police, the suspect entered the store and displayed a small knife while demanding that the clerk open the register. The attendant then grabbed a bat behind the register and the suspect ran out the door. Police say nothing was stolen from the gas station. Anyone with information is asked to call PSP in Hazleton at 570-459-3890. Wilkes-Barre police are investigating a holdup at the Turkey Hill on Hazel Street. It happened around 10.30 last night. The suspect is described as a white female with blonde hair wearing a green jacket with a hood and she had her face covered. There's something, some suspicion it's the same woman who tried to hold up the Gulf Station on Route 93 in West Hazleton. If anyone has information, they are asked to contact Wilkes-Barre police with any information. Vandals knocked over a statue of the Virgin Mary in front of St. Nicholas St. Mary Elementary School on South Washington Street in Wilkes-Barre. It happened overnight on Monday into Tuesday. The statue had been on a pedestal in a grotto in the front of the school. It had been there since the early 50s. There is, real, there is surveillance video which police are viewing to try to identify the culprits. Police have dubbed it a case of institutional vandalism. Today was the last day of classes for the old building at Coughlin High School in downtown Wilkesbury. When Christmas break is over, students who had classes in it will report to the refurbished Mackin Elementary. The old building at Coughlin will be torn down with demolition expected to start this summer. The annex at Coughlin, built in the early 50s, will remain open for the balance of the school year. Coughlin has been the oldest operating high school in the state. It was Wilkes-Barre's second high school in history. Construction began on it in 1909. This summer, the school board voted to close both Coughlin and Myers to tear down the Coughlin and build a new school in its place. It was a dissonant array of, of votes last night in the State House, dropped the idea of a stopgap budget and passed the $30.8 billion version of the budget passed by the Senate last week. The vote was a razor thin 100 to 99 with four members voting no. With not voting, that budget is slated for a third and final vote this afternoon and it passed the House and is now headed to the governor's desk. The budget calls for a $100 million in increases spending for the basic education funding. $50 million increase for ready to learn block grant along with other increases for education. The budget totals $30.3 billion in spending for the state, but it does not look like it will be signed by the governor as of now. If the budget is signed, it will bring to an end to the longest budget standoff in state history. An accused fatal hit-and-run driver lost his request to have his bail reduced. Police stated that Michael Scavone had a blood alcohol level of .214 when he struck and killed 31-year-old Paula Jones on June 7th. Scavone wanted his bail reduced from $400,000 to $125,000 so that he can go home and take care of a 75-year-old mother who suffers from Parkinson's disease. He is also in need of medical treatment for kidney cancer. His attorney, John Pike, argued that the Luzerne County Prison is not equipped to provide services needed by Scavone. Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salavantis stated that he has an extensive criminal history and Luzerne County Judge David Lupus agreed. He remains locked up at the prison awaiting his trial date, which is set for February 29th. 
State Supreme Court Justice J. Michael Eakin was suspended to Tuesday amid allegations that he violated state ethics due to his part in the email scandal which has come to be known as Porngate. The decision was made by the Court of Judicial Discipline. The suspension was with pay pending the trial. William Constopoulos, Eakin's attorney, said Eakin does not intend to contest the suspension. The court rescheduled a pretrial conference for January 21st. A complaint filed by the state's Judicial Conduct Board alleged that Eakin violated rules against judges becoming involved in activities that create the appearance or impriority of raised questions about their on Monday, several legal experts and two female members of Eakin's staff who were mentioned in the emails testified on the justice's behalf, but to no avail. With presence in hand, students from the Health Assistance Program in the Hazleton Area School District visited with students from the Helping Hand Society. Santa Claus also came in to join in the fun this morning. The young students got to sit on Santa's lap and tell him what they wanted for Christmas. Hazleton area students who came bearing gifts gave each student one to enjoy this holiday season. Registered nurse and educator in the program said students have been taking part in this event for 20 years. Well, part of the students uh, club and motivation is community service. And so we do involve the students in activities like this throughout the school year. So you will often see our students not only visiting Helping Hands, but also long-term care, uh, assisted living environments, and so on and so forth, helping out in the community. Those involved with Helping Hands says it's a great way to bring the community together in the spirit of Christmas. Well, it's time now for a first look at our forecast. It's the day two of winter and still no sign of snow, but there's plenty of rain in our forecast. Our Gary Perna is in for Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic, and he is in the Weather Center with all the details. Gary, is he coming in on a sleigh or an ark? Well, that's a good question, Anne. I think Santa's going to have to borrow an ark to come in. And let me tell you something. If this rain that we're experiencing now was snow, we would probably be buried right now. Well, let's take a look currently around the nation. Temperatures really high, except for out here uh, in Idaho, out in Denver. They're coming in the 30s and the 20s, uh, four out in Great Falls. But look at all this warm air coming up. Uh, into our area and what does that mean for our Christmas Eve, our Christmas Day and the weekend following it? We'll have all the answers for you coming up in just a couple of minutes. Anne? Thanks Gary. Coming up next, Christmas is just two days away and with Christmas just around the corner there are still trees in place and we have details on how to keep your tree from going up in pl flames. Plus the Salvation Army bell ringers are out in full force hoping to make this Christmas a little brighter for those less fortunate. Stay tuned, more news is headed your way only on WYLN. You're watching WYLN News with Ann Gownley, Gary Perna, Julie Stefanovich, Paula Degnan, Chief Videographer Mike Lula, Weather with Meteorologist Joe Garbacic, Sports with Eric D. Berardinas, and Gabriella Justin. Hi, I'm Paul Esposito from Victoria's Candies. Welcome to our new location at the Gateway Shopping Center in Edwardsville. Our new location is loaded for the holidays with fresh fudge being made daily. You'll enjoy the taste and smells, but especially the price because now through Christmas, all fudge is just $7.95 a pound. Our delicious homemade fudge is regularly $9.99 a pound, now on sale for just $7.95 a pound. Victoria's Candies, a holiday tradition since 1934. Hi, I'm Donna Palermo, Secretary of Palermo Heart to Heart. We are now recruiting businesses, nonprofits, and individuals who carry beads of courage to encourage children or teens who have cancer or who are coping with other serious chronic illnesses to participate in the program. Inside each carry a bead kit is a match bead set. Every time you carry a bead, you connect with the child. You keep and collect the other bead as a symbol of your commitment to care. If you or your business would like to participate in Beads of Courage, please visit our website listed on the screen. We are here. We are here to fight this. We are here with board certified oncologists. We're here with access to genetic counseling, clinical trials, and the most advanced treatment options. We're here with the strength of the region's leading health network. And now we're here in Hazleton, the new LVHN Cancer Center. We're here for you. Christmas is just two days away and many of their trees up and still decorated but what many may not realize 
is that the dangers could still be lurking. WYLN's Gary Perna spoke with a local fire chief on how to keep you and your family safe this holiday season and keep your tree from going up in flames. On average, 210 structure fires are caused by Christmas trees around the holiday season. Being careful where you place the tree and while decorating it can keep you and your family safe this holiday season. We spoke with Freeland Borough Fire Chief Joe Stepanski about ways in which you can prevent your tree from becoming a fire hazard. Periodically we hear that it was a cause of uh, maybe an outdoor set of lights on a porch. Um, sometimes if a Christmas tree gets too dry, uh, light shorts out, you know, causes a tree to go up. Here are some helpful tips for keeping your tree safe this holiday season. Keep tree at least three feet away from any heat source. Make sure the tree is not blocking an exit. Be sure to add water to the tree daily. Do not use candles to decorate the tree. Always turn the tree lights off before going to bed or leaving the house. Make sure to replace any strings of lights with worn or broken cords or loose bulb connections. If you have a real tree, um, keep it watered real good. Try to water it daily, check it daily, uh, keep it away from any heat source, any open flame area. If you have a, an artificial tree, um, naturally you don't need to water it. Um, you know, when you're decorating them, check your lights. If there's any old light sets that partially out, partially work, I would throw them away, get new ones, um, watch using extension cords, make sure you use the right size extension cord for the amount of lighting that you're going to be have on the tree. Do not put them under carpets, under chairs, uh, make sure they're out where, you know, they're in a safe area. When disposing of your Christmas tree after the holidays, make sure to get rid of the tree before it dries out and make sure to place it outside, not in a garage or against your home. And for those of you who decorate the outside of your home, Chief Stepanski says to make sure that you use the proper decorations to keep your home safe. If you're using outdoor lighting, make sure you're using outdoor lights for the outside weather. Um, you know, some people put a, a if you, so you don't accidentally put in a, an indoor set, make sure they're all marked for outdoor use only. Or, you know, otherwise it could short out with the, the water, the snow, um, then wet conditions. Also, make sure this holiday season and all year long to keep several smoke detectors in your home, especially in sleeping quarters. If you are in need of smoke detectors or carbon monoxide detectors, make sure to stop by your local fire department. For more information on how you can keep you and your family safe this holiday season, make sure you log on to the National Fire Prevention Association's website at nfpa.org. Reporting for WYLN News, I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. Coming up next, uh, Gary Perna is in for a full look at our forecast, plus a look at how the Salvation Army is raising money for those less fortunate this Christmas. Stay tuned. More news is headed your way, including sports, here on WYLN. Hi, I'm Chief Jeffrey Wainwright of the McAdoo Police Department. I wish all of yours a uh, happy holidays, happy new year. Uh, I just would like to throw out the please don't drink and drive on these holiday times. Family owned and operated, the experienced professionals at Lehigh Tire have served the residents of the greater Hazleton area for over 55 years. From our full line of passenger, light truck and commercial tires to our automotive services including tune-ups, inspections, oil changes and alignments. Every time I've ever done business here, they've, they've been very polite, straightforward and the job gets done quickly and right. Find the right tire for the right price today at Lehigh Tire. Did you know that suicide rates are on the rise in Luzerne and Wyoming counties? Did you know that over 100 Americans commit suicide every day? And did you know that you can help prevent suicide? I'm Jeffrey Warren. I'm here to tell you there is help. If you or someone you know is depressed, dial 800-273-TALK or the emergency helpline at 211. For more information and suicide prevention tips, visit any of these websites. Together, we can save lives.
Well, I don't know. Somebody got it wrong. They ordered all this rain for the greater Hazleton area and beyond instead of the snow. That's my forecast. But hey, no snow to talk about right now. Instead, we're dealing with this unusually warm weather and all this rain. Now let's take a look at the graphic for today and there are no watches and warnings uh, moving through with this rain so you know that's a good thing you don't have to worry about any flooding right now uh, nothing coming in from the national weather service about any watches warnings or anything like that that's a good thing hey i would like some snow on christmas but you know the computer models are just not showing it and unfortunately eh, we're not going to get it Taking a look around the state today, not much going on, but on that live Doppler radar, look at all that rain coming through. The greens and yellows showing it's a little heavy down uh, towards Bloomsburg, Danville, the Shenandoah area getting some uh, yellow. But just beyond Hazleton, if you're going out by like Lehighton and Whitehaven, you know, we're getting, catching a break right now. So, you know, we can see some breaks in this and it will be moving out, but we're going to expect rain uh, pretty much throughout uh, the rest of tonight until tomorrow. Temperature right now about 43. Look at that rain. We've collected 45 hundredths of an inch of rain up here at our WYL in studios tonight. That wind, it's still breezing a little bit at about 14 miles an hour change in direction. Currently around the state, we're seeing 50s, uh, lower 60s down the southern part of the state. So we see some cool, but it's warm for right now. Here's what we're talking about. This big storm is moving through our area the past six, hour, six hours, and you can see right, it's going to continue and it's going to push up and hopefully get out of here uh, overnight, as you can see, into Thursday, of course, Christmas Eve. That's going to push out of here, going to break up late Thursday night uh, into Friday. Still some chances of some uh, rain showers Friday night uh, for our Christmas. Taking a look again, a little closer to home, you could see not too much, you know, we're going to do until about Thursday night. That's when it's all going to push out of here. Late Thursday night into Friday will be okay. Again, some chances of uh, rain Friday night like we just saw on there. But, you know, hey, we'll deal with it. It's not snow. Travel cast, if you're heading to family's house tonight or going to pick somebody up at the airport, rain, there's going to be fog. Make sure you take your time uh, and be careful as you head out tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to see 60s. Still a chance for some of that rain. And of course, the rainfall over Thursday into Friday, we're going to see about less than a, an inch here in our area. Your seven-day forecast here in WYLN, I'm going to tell you, we're getting rain. And we're going to have rain for most of the seven-day forecast. Thursday, you know, we're going to see 68. Friday, a little bit of rain. Saturday, more rain, just a little bit. And Sunday through Wednesday, going to be clear out. Want some nice temperatures uh, for the rest of the week. We'll be back with more right after this. Combined Insurance makes it easy to protect you and your loved ones by paying cash directly to you when you need it most. Whether you're looking for accident and sickness, disability, or life coverage, Combined Insurance has a policy to meet your needs and fit your budget. Call John Ravello, 570-499-0504 for an appointment to help determine the best coverage for you. That's John Ravello. 570-499-0504. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road, Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicapped accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. There are packages available to fit anyone's budget, restaurant and catering on site. Our facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor and private parties. Call 570-384-2314. WYLN is proud to announce a huge technical upgrade to our channels that will bring a better digital picture and expanded coverage area to viewers all over northeastern and central Pennsylvania. In addition to channel 35.1 in Hazleton, you can watch a crystal clear picture in Berwick and Columbia County on channel 47.1 and in East Stroudsburg on channel 24.1. And we're proud to announce Pennsylvania's newest TV station, channel 9.1 in Williamsport, serving Lycoming, Montour, Northumberland, and Union Counties. Now more than ever, WYLN is your local network. The Salvation Army Red Kettle Drive is still underway, and they're collecting funds for people in need this Christmas season. WYLN's Julie Stefanovich has details on how you can donate. The sounds of bells are filling the air at the hometown Walmart. It's that time of the year for the Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign. The money raised at the store helps the Tamaqua Salvation Army reach its yearly budget. This year's goal is $55,000 that will go towards the $400,000 budget. 
The Tamaqua branch serves all of Schuylkill and parts of Carbon County, and every penny donated goes a long way to help those in need, according to Major Sharon Wispo. It's really a big help. It does a lot for our community. Every little penny adds up. Um, right now, we are about $1,000 ahead of our, our goal from last year, but that could change. And so every penny that you put in there, whether it's a penny, a dime, a dollar, um, it goes a long way in, in helping us to reach that goal that we have. Volunteers are out in full force helping to put smiles on people's faces and collect kettle donations. We spoke with Brian Thomas, who has been giving his time for the last three years. Uh, every time anybody puts anything in this kettle, it feels good, especially little kids. Uh, I've had instances where little kids have gotten a couple of dollars from their grandfather to do whatever they want with, and instead of going in and buying a toy, they've come over and put it in the kettle, and it just it, it's heartwarming to see something like that. Walmart has also partnered with the Salvation Army for its Fill the Truck program. Shoppers can donate toys to over 400 children in Schuylkill County this Christmas season. The store takes pride in helping the community out, especially the kids. Customers can also do their part and lend a helping hand. I think the shoppers really enjoy it. It gives them another um, output for uh, some place to go to, to drop off uh, goods for the children. You know, they don't have to run around. They're here shopping and the uh, trucks are right here for them. Toys are needed for kids of all ages. Coats, hats, and gloves are also needed to keep everyone warm this winter. We would like, though, if people would like to, to give jackets, coats, warm, warm uh, winter things, uh, scarves, hats, mittens, any of those kind of things would also be a, a great thing to, to put in the truck. There are also other ways to donate to the Tamaqua Salvation Army. You can stop into the Salvation Army 105 West Broad Street in Tamaqua, and you can drop off a donation there as well. The last day for the Red Kettle Drive will be Christmas Eve, which leaves plenty of time to get out and give a little Christmas spirit to the community. In Hometown, for WYLN News, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Thank you, Julie. Coming up next, Eric DiBerardinas is in with sports here on WYLN. Plus, our Gary Perno will have one final look at our forecast. Stay tuned. From Santa Claus, from directly from the North Pole, I want to wish everybody... A happy, happy holidays and get ready and behave because Santa's coming to town. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. Join us this week for a very special Christmas edition of Let's Talk Chiropractic. We've got some family friends and a very, very special guest. It's all coming up this week. It's Let's Talk Chiropractic with Santa. Join us. In the Wyoming Valley Conference, it's rare to see a divisional matchup before January. Not the case in the Schuylkill League, with Blue Mountain and Panther Valley each playing their fourth division game last night. The host Eagles enter 2-1, the Panthers 0-3. First quarter, Zach Beaver just needs one more shot at second chances, 9-3, Blue Mountain men. Mason Zerby, sick pass, Beaver again. Is it too late to say sorry to Panther Valley? No mistakes there. And Mark Chelius ahead of the pack and the Panthers for the lay-in. Rini Figueroa will add a score on the other end, but the Eagles victorious 66 to 40 is the final. We've waited the appropriate amount of time to make reasonably fair assessments on the strength of local hoops teams at this point. Most schools have played at least five games, so with that, the first edition this year of WYLN's high school basketball power rankings. On the boys' side, Pottsville, the number one team last year, replaced a lot of talent, but still at the top. Hazleton just returned from a trip to Florida where they displayed they can compete with some of the top teams from other states. 
Crestwood narrowly edges Nanticoke after a one-point Comets victory over the Trojans on Monday. And Shenandoah Valley rounds out the top five, topping Mahanui area in overtime last night. The girls' rankings, Nanticoke returned almost everyone from a very good team last year and start off as our number one. Holy Redeemer replacing Division I talent, Alexis Lewis, but also showing balance so far. Hazleton always competitive and boasts one of the top players in the area in Mackenzie URI. Marion Catholic and Blue Mountain, two Schuylkill League schools coming at number four and five, beginning the year unbeaten in division play. Joe Madden's return to Hazleton for the holidays is different than your typical homecoming. The city's police chief, police chief Frank D'Andrea, describes it as a five-day whirlwind tour. Tonight, WYLN will debut a Joe Madden holiday special following the Hazleton native for five days in December as he attempts to integrate and improve the place where he grew up. I think too many times, um, you know, we, we, we tend to mock what we don't understand. Uh, if you come on out here, and I promise you, I'll give you five minutes in this building, five. And I'll give you five minutes to meet our kids and talk to them. And if after five minutes you want to go with that heavy heart or that hard heart and, and leave this building, go, go, go for it. On your screen now, a list of dates and times the 30-minute show will air, beginning tonight at 7 p.m. and airing an additional five times throughout December. Stay tuned. Coming up, Gary Perna will have a final look at your forecast. The Victoria story is a glorious story, the sweetest that's ever been told. They found they were handy at making fine candy for family and friends to behold. Word spread through the land that Victoria's candies would one day be leading the rest. Now that day is here, for the facts are quite clear that Victoria's candies are best. Join us this season for holiday programming on WYLN, featuring the Chef Lou Christmas, holiday traditions, holiday baking with Jen Yamola, the sounds of the season, from Saint to Claus, hometown holiday, the Your Life Christmas special, Can Do Christmas, Polka Connection Christmas, and the Service Electric Wilkesbury Christmas Parade. Check out our website at WYLNTV.com for dates and times. WYLN, your home for the holiday station. off the beaten path on WYLN TV 35 and discover the Pennsylvania you never knew existed. Well, the computer froze. Oh, there it goes. All right. Anyway, let's take a live look right now outside. And again, we're going to see a lot of this rain coming pushing through our area overnight uh, into the next uh, few hours here. But let's take a look. Temperatures again holding about 54. It's going to dip down a little lower tonight. But look at that. Since I talked to you just a couple minutes ago, we've gained uh, we were at 45 hundredths of an inch. We're now at 48 hundredths of an inch. So a lot of rain moving through our area right now. Here's what we're going to expect the next 24 hours. A lot of rain pushing through our area. We're going to get a little bit of a break uh, Thursday night into uh, Wednesday night into Thursday. Excuse me. Tonight's uh, not too bad going. And seven-day forecast up on your screen right now. And... Um, so, we'll see. Not looking too shabby there. My, no. my timing was off a little bit, but hey. It's always good. <laughs> always good, though. Um, okay. But I didn't mean to steal your thunder with Noah's Ark. And hey, no problem, but you, you may need a boat to get out of Hazleton it tonight. It's pretty crazy <laughs> with all this rain, but it's not snow. So I'd rather the snow. Have a good one, everyone.